make kombucha today, some of the things that you're going to need are a big glass jar, um, white distilled vinegar, apple cider vinegar, plain white sugar, purified drinking water, organic green tea, cheesecloth, uh, rubber band, a SCOBY, if you don't already have one, you could make one and you would need original kombucha uh, for that process. But today's recipe, we're going to have a, a SCOBY. The first thing you're going to want to do is boil your distilled water and steep your green tea. So the batch that I'm going to be making is about two gallons. So the amount of tea bags that I would use, um, anywhere between 20 and 30 tea bags for two gallons. So you want to boil that, steep the tea bags for about 10 minutes, and then move on to the next step. And then you can just start putting your tea bags in right away. You don't have to wait for the water to come to a boil. the tea up to a boil. I shut the burner off and let it steep for about 10 minutes. So now we're ready to take the tea bags out and stir in the sugar. So now that we've removed the tea bags, we're going to dissolve one cup of sugar and two tablespoons of that apple cider vinegar. So once you've added those ingredients, you're going to want to give that a good stir. And before we get any further in the recipe, before we add the SCOBY, you want to make sure that it cools down to room temperature. So this is where the longest part of the process is, is letting that cool enough for the SCOBY to um, be added. Yep, if you don't let it cool down enough, it will kill the SCOBY. Okay, so now that we've dissolved the sugar and the apple cider vinegar, we've let this cool to about room temperature. We're going to transfer this into the big glass jar, add in our SCOBY, and then we'll cover it all up with cheesecloth. So let's get that going here. I'm just going to take this off. This has already been sanitized. We're just going to pour our tea in. transferred all of our tea into the glass jar and let it completely cool to room temperature we're ready to add the SCOBY in and cover it up so I'm just going to remove this part add our SCOBY in and it might splash a little bit And usually it's just going to kind of sit on top. Sometimes it can tend to sink to the bottom. Uh, but as this ferments, it's going to grow another baby SCOBY on the top layer. So after you get your SCOBY in, you're going to want to cover it with a cheesecloth. I prefer to use cheesecloth because it breathes a little bit better, but it doesn't allow anything to really get through and um, disrupt the kabucha. If you don't have cheesecloth, you can also use some sort of like a flour, flour cloth, or even a dish towel. 
the dish towel can kind of be a little bit bulky, so just keep that in mind. I like to layer mine into about three, three folds, and then just cover the top of the lid like that. You want to make sure that it's nice and tight, and make sure that you have a rubber band or some sort of thing in the top to make sure that it stays tight and that there's a nice seal so that nothing gets in your jar. And then you can kind of pull the ends tight. It's nice and tight. There's going to be some good airflow, but fruit flies and other insects won't be able to get in there. So after you have that all covered, um, you can just leave it on your counter. I like to let mine sit for about two weeks. Some people also like to leave it at the top of their refrigerator. Um, you want to make sure that it's staying warm enough and it's going to be warmer on the top of the fridge. But with a bigger batch like this, I like to keep it on the counter so that I, I can keep an eye on it and ma just make sure that the SCOBY and everything is looking like I want it to look. So wherever you want to store it, you don't want to store it in a cupboard or anything like that. You want it to be able to breathe. So I'm just going to let this sit over in the corner here. And let it brew. Okay, so our kombucha has been fermenting for two weeks, so it's ready to be bottled. Um, if you were to look underneath the cloth here, that was my main SCOBY. It's pretty big. And then every batch that you make, it kind of grows a baby SCOBY. So that's what's on top there. So you want to remove the cloth from the top. And anytime we're handling the SCOBY, remember um, never to use metal. You can use your bare hands or a plastic spoon. So before I take the SCOBY out, I'm just going to wash my hands with hot water and um, white distilled vinegar. And that's going to be fine for handling the SCOBY. And then I'm going to just put it in its own little jar before we take it out. You never want to use soap because the soap is going to kill the good bacteria that you want out of the SCOBY. It actually likes the natural bacteria that's on your hands, but again, you want them, you don't want any kind of outside um, bacteria or anything like that on the hands. So just hot water and white vinegar is fine for handling it. This might seem gross to some people, but it's literally the easiest way to get your scoby out without it kind of breaking apart. So my hands are clean. I'm just going to stick it right in, grabbing the entire scoby, the baby also. You can see it's quite large because I've been using it over and over. It can look kind of gross, but that just um, goes to tell you that it has some good mother built up on there, which is what you want in the tea. So we're just going to put that in the clean jar. I already pre-washed that and rinsed it with vinegar. So then what you want to do, um, so this is going to be its little home until I make the next batch. Um, I wouldn't necessarily have to put more kombucha in there if I'm going to use it right away. Um, but if you were going to store it in a cabinet and you weren't going to use it right away, you'd want to put some existing kombucha in there, uh, some liquid, to let it um, live better. So I'm just going to cover that up for now and set that to the side because we'll use that for our next batch. So then what I like to do is, for easy pouring purposes, this is already clean, again plastic, you never want to use, you can use glass also, this is glass jar. The SCOBY and everything like that just doesn't like metal. So what I'm going to do is just pour this into here um, and then pour it into the clean jars. They were already washed with hot water vinegar. So I like to use a couple big jars for bigger batches and then smaller bottles. I've just saved old kombucha bottles that have already been cleaned um, for single use. sanitized we can transfer the kombucha into the jars seal them up um, and then they're ready to go so I just like to pour it in a different pitcher so it's easier to pour into the smaller jars and you'll see some floaty things in there that's actually the mother that's what you want in your kombucha it's really 
that's the benefit. We just like to put it in there so it's easier to pour. And you want to fill it pretty close to the top. You'll notice that it's bubbling. That's because of the fermentation. That's a good sign that you have a good batch of kombucha. So we're going to fill it just about to the top. And then, oh, I filled the yeah, wrong jar. But we'll use, use this one. Um, once you actually have it in the jar, you can use metal lids or whatever, the aluminum, like the canning. It's just mainly when you're handling the SCOBY not to use any kind of metal. So you want to make sure that this is really nice and tight. Like I said, the kombucha is already ready to drink, but if you wanted some more carbonation in your kombucha, you can just leave it sit on the counter up to like two to three days, and it's just going to naturally carbonate on its own. After that two to three days, you would want to store it in the refrigerator from there. So I have a couple big jars, a couple single-use jars there. Again, you want to make sure that it's sealed all the way. Okay, so now we have all of our kombucha bottled up. You can, it's uh, ready to drink now, or if you wanted it to be a little bit more carbonated, you can let it sit at room temperature for two to three days. Um, but after that, you would definitely want to keep it in the refrigerator. Um, and what I forgot to do is take a taste test. I usually taste it right after I take the SCOBY out just to make sure that it's the um, sweetness that I prefer. But I know that the 14 days is what I like with my kombucha, so it typically always tastes the same. So let's just give it a taste, see how it turned out. And it is just perfect for uh, my taste. So I don't like mine very sweet. So if you usually like your kombucha a little bit sweeter, I would maybe not quite go 14 days, maybe 10 to 12. But you can experiment with that your, um, on your own to see what um, perfect day, amount of days is that it ferments for you. I hope this video was helpful to you in making your kombucha. Um, thanks for watching.